Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. This video is first in a new series of how-to videos for beginners on film photography. In this first part, I'm going to be talking about the camera, what a camera is, different types of cameras. Primarily though, this video will be focused on the most popular of all film cameras, the 35 millimeter single lens reflex. So let's get started. This series assumes no prior knowledge of photography. It will be just the basics. And if you're coming from a cell phone and want to shoot film, or if you've shot film in the past and just want a refresher course, I think these are the perfect videos for you. I will be publishing a new video in this series the first Wednesday of every month. So we're going to start with the camera and in its simplest form, a camera is basically a light tight box with a piece of sensitized material at one end and a lens or a pinhole at the other end to let light in to expose the film. Now this is a very old Kodak Box Junior, Brownie Junior. Uh, it took 620 roll film uh, and it's in the sim simplest of cameras. Okay, so this is basically again where we begin. Just a box with film at one end and some type of lens to let light in at the other end. As I said, I will mainly be talking about 35 millimeter single lens reflex cameras because they are the most popular and most likely those are the cameras that you will have or will be purchasing. All right, there's a ton of them available on the used camera market. Um, so uh, we're mainly going to talk about that. But just very briefly, I just want to go over just a few other types of cameras. This is a twin lens reflex cameras, the, uh, camera. The reason it's called twin lens reflex, it has two lenses, one for viewing, one for taking the picture. Also, we had rangefinder cameras, okay? Much smaller than single lens reflex cameras, took 35 millimeter film, uh, no interchangeable lenses on this type of camera, on this particular one, uh, and um, just again a fairly simple 35 millimeter camera. But what we're going to concentrate on is the 35 millimeter single lens reflex or SLR. Now over the years they got more and more automated. Uh, this is one of the simplest. This dates from 1962. It's a very simple camera had no built-in light meter. Now we'll get into all that, light meters, exposure, composition, all these things in future videos. Just right now, I just wanna explain how these cameras work uh, and the various controls and what you need to know to take pictures with one. A lot of what I say about a 35 millimeter single lens reflex will in many cases apply to a 35 millimeter rangefinder camera, a twin lens reflex camera, even a view camera. And we don't really need to pay too much attention to that right now. What we want to do is, I just want to go over the controls on the simplest of 35 millimeter cameras. And this is a Honeywell Pentax H1A. Again, I said it dates from 1960. Took interchangeable lenses, okay, normal lens, on a 35 millimeter camera is usually a 50 millimeter lens. Uh, in this case, it's a 55 millimeter lens. Um, it gives you an approximate view of what the human eye will see. There are also wide angle lenses available for this and all interchangeable lens cameras. A wide angle lens will give you a wider view. If you want to take a picture of a large group and you don't have a lot of room to back up, you could put on a wide angle lens. If you want to shoot something in the distance, you would use a telephoto lens. It will bring distant objects closer to you. But for now, let's go over the features of this camera. We're going to be referring to a 35 millimeter single lens reflex from now on as an SLR, single lens reflex. Okay, so when you hear SLR, you will know what that means. These cameras take 35 millimeter film, Okay, 35 millimeter film 
is available in black and white, in color. Many different films are available. They are primarily in 24 and 36 exposure rolls, so you get 24 or 36 pictures per roll. The film is in a cartridge, okay? And some of the film is sticking out at the end. This is called the leader, okay? And uh, we pull some of this film out, we insert the cartridge into the camera, and it is placed in a take-up swall. Film has gotten expensive in recent years as there has been a increased interest in film photography, even though digital photography has pretty much taken over. Um, but film photography has enjoyed a new, it's kind of a rebirth almost, with a lot of different films being available. And we will, again, we will talk about some of the different films in a future video, but uh, let's just get into the controls of the camera. As I mentioned earlier, a, the basic camera has a light-sensitive material, in this case, 35 millimeter film, at the back of the camera. At the front, we have a lens to focus the light onto that film, okay? And these cameras, all 35 millimeter single lens reflex cameras, have a shutter release. What that does, it, is enable, it enables you to actually take the picture. When you press that shutter release, there is a shutter at the back of the camera, and most 35 millimeter single lens reflex cameras have what's called a focal plane shutter. A focal plane shutter sits right in front of the area where the film goes. Okay, it's usually made of rubberized cloth or some type of metal. In some of the higher end cameras, it's made of titanium. So when you press the shutter release, the shutter opens for a specified time and exposes the film to the light. And again, I'm going to go into much detail in a future video. Actually, the next video will be on exposure and how to properly set your camera for the correct exposure, okay? Um, film comes in various sensitivities. And the higher the number, and this particular film I have here is a 400 speed. There are also 100 speed films and 200 speed films. The higher the number, the more sensitive it is to light. Again, we will get way more into that when we talk about exposure. When we press that shutter release and the shutter opens, uh, it opens for a specified time and we have control of that. There is a shutter speed dial on the camera and this particular camera, the shutter speeds go from 1 500th of a second, which is a very brief time, all the way down to one full second, okay? All right, that is one second. Um, if we're photographing in a dark location, we may need those slow shutter speeds. If we're photographing on a sunny day at the beach, we may need those higher speeds. So a combination of the shutter speed and the opening on the lens, okay? The lens has an adjustable opening. Kind of works like the iris on your eye. You will have a wide opening for dark situations. The same way, if you notice, your eye will seem to open more in a dark situation. If you look at someone's eyes on a bright day, on a sunny day, the iris on their eye is very small. In the dark, in a dark room, in a nightclub, uh, you will notice, if you look at someone's eyes, the pupil is more dilated, it's open more, kind of like when you go to the eye doctor and they put those drops in and your eye is dilated. So the camera has an adjustable, what we call aperture, okay? Works, again, similar to the iris on your eye. There are the smaller the number, for example, in this lens, two is a wide opening. The smallest opening on this lens is 16, which is a very small opening which you would use, again, possibly at the beach on a sunny day. The other control you have on these cameras is a focusing mechanism, okay? Kind of like a binoculars. You focus your binoculars, so you need to focus the lens. And you view through the viewfinder, turn the lens one way or the other to get the image looking sharp. Now, there are focus aids in the viewfinder to help with that. 
And again, we in the future, we will get more into detail on that. So once you take a picture, so we've now taken a picture, let's say, now we're going to advance the film. And this lever on the camera advances the film. It cocks the shutter so it's ready for the next exposure. And it advances the frame counter. There's a frame counter on here that lets you know how many pictures you have taken. And so that one lever does all of that. Now let's say we have finished our roll. We've taken 36 great pictures, hopefully. And uh, now what happens? Now the film has been moving from the cartridge, which is at this end of the camera, to a take-up spool, which is at this end of the camera. Now if we open the camera at this point, we would ruin the film because it's all on this side. I'm going to go into detail in a future video on exactly how to load the camera. I just want to show you briefly what happens. So we're going to drop the film in. In the cassette, we pull out some of the leader, okay, and we stick it in the take-up spool. And as we operate the advance lever, the film moves out of the cassette onto the take-up spool. Okay, now this is not a good roll of film. This is just a test roll to show how to load the camera. But anyway, the film, as we advance, comes out of the cassette and goes over to this side to the take-up spool. That's why if you open the camera, the film's going to be ruined. Okay, so once the camera's loaded, we close the back, we take our pictures, okay, and then when we are done the roll, we press the rewind button on the bottom, and most cameras have a rewind button, some do it a little differently, and then we must rewind that film back into the cassette so that we could take it out and send it off to the lab or process it ourselves. Now, if you're shooting black and white, um, you could develop that film at home. You could develop color at home, but it's a much more uh, involved process, and I don't really think it's worth the effort. However, you could process black and white film at home. It doesn't really take that much money. It's not that difficult. You only need a few chemicals. So in a future video, I will be going over how you can do that yourself. In the next video, I'm going to tell you how to set the camera. Now, this combination of aperture, the lens opening, either small or wide, or shutter speed, either fast or slow, the combination of that, those two, along with the film speed and the quantity of light, whether it's outdoors on a bright day or indoors by um, just lamps or candlelight will determine how you set the camera. And we'll get, like I said, we will get into that in a future video. Now, just a little bit about some other cameras. So this was your basic camera in 1962. There were cameras similar to this that came out in, um, 19, in the 50s. Uh, oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. On a single lens reflex camera, you are viewing through the lens. You will notice a prism here. Let me take this lens off. And this is a screw mount lens. There are many different types of mounts on lenses. So these cameras have a mirror. All right, so the light comes through the lens, strikes the mirror, and then is reflected up into the prism, which has a focusing screen mounted below it. And that, when you are looking through the viewfinder, you are actually looking directly through the lens. So what happens when you press the shutter release? Now you have this mirror here, which is between the lens and the film. And I showed you the shutter is in front, just in front of the film at the back of the camera. When you press the shutter release, that mirror flips up. The shutter opens, the, the mirror, actually the, in this order, the mirror flips up, the shutter opens, and the film is exposed for the specified time that you set on the, on the shutter speed dial. Let's do that again. I'm going to set a one second shutter speed. Hope you heard that. Shutter stayed open. The mirror flipped up. The shutter opened and stayed open for that time. Now, at that point, when that mirror flips up and you're looking through the viewfinder, 
you see nothing. The viewfinder actually blacks out for the amount of time that the shutter is open. So with a single lens reflex camera, at the actual moment of exposure, you are blinded because the mirror has flipped up. So let's say you're photographing a person, uh, that mirror flips up, and maybe they blinked and you could miss it because, again, at the moment of exposure, you don't see anything. Now, as time went on, cameras got to be more sophisticated. They got to be more automated. In order to know how to properly set your shutter speed and aperture on the camera to get proper exposure for your particular film in your particular situation, whether it's a bright day or a, a, a cloudy day, whatever, um, there were light meters available, handheld light meters, and they would actually measure the light. You would set the film speed Okay, whether, like we said earlier, with this particular roll was 400 speed, you would set that on the light meter, you would take a reading, aim the meter at your subject, and it would give you a set of numbers. It would give you various combinations of shutter speeds and apertures, and you would set the camera accordingly. Well, in the early 60s, I believe 1964, uh, cameras had built-in light meters, so that was one of the first things towards automation. I've had a light meter built into the camera uh, that read through the lens and uh, you centered a needle in the viewfinder. As time went on uh, into the late 60s, early 70s, there were some cameras that had automation, more automation, where instead of just having to center a needle in the viewfinder with a combination of shutter speed and aperture, uh, you just selected one. You just selected an aperture and the camera would automatically select a shutter speed. No longer did you have to center a needle. Now you could still do that. Those cameras also allowed you to do, um, also allowed you to use it on a manual mode, okay? Uh, went along a little bit further in the 70s and you had cameras that had full automation, known as program mode. You set the camera, usually the shutter speed dial to a P or a mode dial to P, and the camera automatically selected both your aperture and your shutter speed. And then more automation came in the mid 80s. I believe Minolta was the first com company to have an interchangeable lens autofocus camera. So no longer did you have to turn the focus ring to get the image sharp in the viewfinder. There was an autofocus sensor in the camera, and uh, there were autofocus auto points in the viewfinder. Those first cameras just had one in the center. You just aim the camera at what you wanted to focus on, and it would focus on that subject. Uh, all through this time, even with the manual cameras, there were cameras that had motor drives, okay? They would advance the film automatically. No longer did you have to use an advanced lever. The camera would advance the film after each frame. Some of those cameras had continuous uh, release. So in other words, you could press down on the shutter release, hold it down, and the camera would fire three frames a second, five frames a second. Uh, and on the later cameras even faster. So cameras became much more automated and then of course later on we had digital cameras but we're not going to get into digital cameras at this point um, uh, but just suffice it to say that uh, as time went on technology improved and the cameras became more automated, more sophisticated with far more controls and far uh, more complicated so that's why primarily in this series of videos, I'm going to stick to your basic cameras, your cameras without a built-in meter, cameras that had a built-in meter, and a little bit on automation. And uh, when I shoot film, and I primarily shoot digital today from my professional work, uh, but when I shoot film, I like to go with a traditional, classic, manual camera 
that only requires a battery for the meter. And I, I, I didn't mention it when I was talking about this Pentax here, but this camera requires no battery, no battery at all. It's fully mechanical. It's all metal construction. As time went on in 1964, as I mentioned, when you had a meter in the camera, a battery was required for the meter, but only for the meter. If that battery died, you could still, all the shutter speeds worked, you could still focus the camera and so forth. As time went on and they went to automation, most of those cameras required a battery. The shutters in the camera became electronic as opposed to mechanical, okay? Uh, they became like mini computers. And then, of course, when you went, once you went to autofocus, they were completely computerized, basically, and a battery was, was required. So if that battery died, you basically had a very expensive paperweight. That's why I prefer the older mechanical cameras, all metal construction, uh, that only required a battery for the meter. And the batteries for those cameras that had a, just a built-in meter, uh, they could last up to a year. So uh, you really didn't have to worry about carrying a bunch of spare batteries as you do with the later cameras that were totally dependent on batteries for operation. So I guess that's it for this video. Uh, I think we learned a little bit about cameras. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to set the camera, how to set your aperture and shutter speed, depending on the film you're using, depending on the light conditions. And I'll talk about doing that using a accessory handheld meter. There are also apps for your cell phone that will allow you to do that. And there are also charts. Uh, there's something called the Sunny 16 rule, and we will go over that in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it explained cameras enough for you to start thinking about possibly buying one, or if you have one, to has, has been collecting dust on the shelf for a time, to maybe dust it off and get, get it ready to shoot pictures. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and tap that bell so you'll be alerted anytime I come out with a new video. Now, the next video in this series will be out at the beginning of the, actually the first uh, Wednesday, first Wednesday in November. And uh, I hope to be having a new one every first Wednesday as we go through this series on uh, photography 35 millimeter photography for beginners. And please, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear and you needed further explanation, please, my email is in the description. Email me, uh, leave a comment in the comments below. I respond to all comments and all emails. So I will talk to you next time. Our shutter release. This will be a one second exposure. Okay, now at the moment of. All right, now let me just show you the focal plane shutter. Okay. Okay, and as you can see, Okay, so that's our focal plane shutter, and then when we load the film, the film is sitting behind the shutter. Okay, so the shutter is between the film and the lens. Now, let's take this lens off. This is a screw mount lens. Okay. Now, if we look into the mirror box here, let's advance the film. Okay. At the moment of exposure, if we look into the mirror box here, 
if we look into the camera with the lens removed, 35 millimeter film comes in 24 or 36 exposure rolls. Um, it comes in a cassette or a cartridge. When we load the camera, I'm going to go into detail in a future video on exactly how to load the camera. I just want to show you briefly what happens. So we're going to drop the film in, in the cassette. We pull out some of the leader, okay, and we stick it in the take-up spool. Okay, and as we advance this particular camera has no built-in light meter. We need a way to measure the light to set our exposure. Um, this is an old handheld light meter. We simply point it at the subject, press the button. After setting the ISO, the ASA, this film speed on the meter, we then aim it at our subject and get a reading, and that will tell us how to set the camera. Okay, so that's our focal plane shutter, and then when we load the film, the film is sitting behind the shutter. Okay, so the shutter is between the film and the lens. Now, let's take this lens off. This is a screw mount lens. 